summer, champagne, holiday, champagne, everyday champagne. <laughs> all the teachers and all the manuals, uh, all the books at that particular time, they mentioned that for soups, in general, you don't need to recommend wine. However, so when we talk about carbonara, where the sommelier are very focused. They are using egg, they don't use how much they use egg. Uh, they use pancetta, okay, it's a matric pancetta, it's a normal pancetta. This is the sommelier point of view. And third, very important, what type of cheese? It's a mull, it's a creamy, it's a hard cheese. By the book, supposed to be hard cheese. But let's go to something that you'll find it pretty much anywhere, which is bangers and mash. Sausage with mashed potatoes. <laughs> this is like a real challenge now. I think people vaguely know that white wines and rosé wines, you know, they need to be cold. But again, what would be the right temperature for this, roughly? Cheers, Sante, Salud, Prost, and Norok. Norok! <laughs> Today on the podcast, we are delighted to have back Alexandru Dan, head sommelier at the Atlantic Hotel here in Jersey. And we're going to talk about wine and how can you choose the right wine whilst you're on holiday this summer. Having earned the 40th place in top 100 sommeliers in the UK, Alexandru has got a wealth of experience and he's going to help us pair popular European dishes with local wine varieties. Alexander Dan, welcome back on the podcast. It's great to have you back because I know whenever, and I'm sure in the future when we'll have you back, we'll always talk about wine, which is amazing. Wonderful. Good evening. And uh, thank you very much for uh, your second invitation that uh, you offer me to be part of your hospitality podcast here in Jersey. It is indeed a truly real pleasure to join back you and uh, your followers for another podcast and looking forward to have a great uh, evening together with and about food and with and about wine and with and about people. Let's talk about what we've got on the table. Let's talk about this champagne and what details can you give us uh, about it? And, you know, summer, champagne, holiday, <laughs> champagne, everyday champagne. Uh, those we mentioned, uh, what is interesting uh, about champagne? First of all, champagne is that kind of beverage that you could drink it from the very early in the morning until end uh, end of the day you could have it on your breakfast easily with some uh, lovely benedict eggs or some florentine or even some royal eggs or other type of uh, breakfast uh, you could have it on a brunch why not you could have it on the lunch mm. you could enjoy it on the afternoon tea you could have it at five o'clock tea <laughs> you could have it at dinner before dinner after dinner and why not you could party also with the champagne uh, those we mentioned, uh, I will uh, give you some small information about one of my uh, top five economical champagne. Let's say like that, because all the champagnes are good. However, each and every person is having some several champagnes on his palate, on his taste. Mm. Uh, and this is a Poroget. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers, yeah, you know, it really is. You, you, we start to speak a lot and uh, I'm already thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Salute. <laughs> yeah, it, it really is. I like it. I like um, it. What is interesting about Porsche? They are running uh, the business on, at the fifth generation at the moment. They do champagne businesses 849. At this particular time, the head of the uh, business, the CEO, it's Hubert Dubeli. Uh, regarding our product that uh, we are enjoying during the podcast, it's an enjoyable Porsche. Yeah, it's a, a brut reserve. Uh, and it's vinificated equally on the free grapes uh, allowed it to vinify champagne, and those are Chardonnay, Pinot Noir, and Pinot Menuet. Uh, what is interesting regarding uh, France and Britain and Paul Roger on the same time, uh, Paul Roger as a brand of champagne was probably the most favorite brand of champagne of uh, Winston, Sir Winston Churchill. Wow. Uh, starting with uh, 1908, uh, Paul Roger became his favorite champagne. Even uh, after the gentleman, uh, Mr. Sir uh, Winston Churchill passed, Paul Roger started to make some very interesting labels in uh, his honor. So Paul Roger, as I mentioned to you, on, on the same page with uh, Tétinger, with Bollinger, uh, Bile Car Salmon, they're on top of my favorites on economical uh, mm. champagne uh, field. Amazing, yeah. Well, that's a really nice story. Do you present this like every time you, do you try to give a bit of a background, you know, of a wine you present to a customer in a similar way to kind of understand what, 
a bit about that wine. Is that how it usually works? Uh, I do my best in order to to present the product. If it's a champagne, a wine, or mm. a dessert wine, and I, I try my best to give them more uh, more information to the guests, just to enjoy more the liquid and the history behind. Yeah, because it, it, the story it's the one also that sells in most situations, right? Especially with big brands, you know that you if you have a story behind it, it just feels better. I don't know. Like now that you told me, you know, <laughs> you're thirsty again. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> And it also tastes better because, you know, you, when you know that Churchill used to like this, well, you know, why shouldn't I? <laughs> like, <laughs> so, yeah, amazing. Yeah, that was a that was a nice story of the of the champagne. And I'm sure there are many others probably that you could cover. Um, this is just one off. But now going if we, if we going on holiday, which people are going these days, you know, because it's just that time of the year. Where do we stop first? Where do we? Where, where do you want to stop first? Ah, oh, we're drinking champagne. So we're going. Yeah, let's we're going, go to France. <laughs> let's go to France. Yeah, especially when you go by ferry, it's not that far. It's, actually, yeah. it's so close. Let's go to France and then let's talk about the French, the French food that can be paired also with wine, which yeah, in 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 France is it's a it's a very common sport. Let's say. <laughs> um, so let's begin with Cocovan which for people that don't know is a chicken braised with wine, mushrooms and bacon. Well, I'm sure there are many variations from here. Some will say, well, it should be kind of like a pancetta style instead of bacon. It should be this instead of that. But briefly and broadly speaking, this is what the dish is about. So how do we pair a coca van if we're going now in France, although probably during this time of the year, it's not because it's quite warm. Maybe it's not exactly the dish we would go for, but who knows? You know, you want to try traditional, you go for coco van. Uh, first of all, France it's uh, considered to be the number one co- country in the world regarding gastronomy. Hmm. Uh, since uh, Escoffier and Savara, and in our days, the the culinary from France it's more and more uh, intense, and more you study about the culinary, more you learn. Yeah. On the same time, France is also a top quality wine producer. Yeah, top three in the world. Some people say they are number one. Some people, they say they're number two, but they are still there. They're still on top three. Uh, from my point of view, when you're talking about France, you're talking about legacy, culinary legacy and wine legacy. Um, Coca Vin, it's a, a individually dish. It's very particular. However, it's having the juiciness, it's having the freshness, the velvety of the chicken most of the time. And of course, it's a... a at that kind of dish that will be matched perfectly, I'll give you three options. Mm. Will match perfectly with the Pinot Noir. And now I will go straight forward for a Burgundy Côte de Bon Pinot Noir. Okay. It's matching uh, perfectly during the summer if it's too hot outside. Think about that. You could have a lovely uh, Sancerre vinificated in Rosé from Pinot Noir, but from the other mm. part of France, from Loire Valley. And why not? You could take in consideration to have a Coca Vin with a, a lovely rosé champagne. Wow, that's interesting. You see, that's the part which is kind of interesting to me because the reason why I, I kind of describe it like that because it's warm outside and all that is because I didn't know till fairly, fairly recently, not that I, I have the knowledge myself, but now you, you get into details, is that just because you it, it's hot outside, it doesn't mean you need to drink room temperature wine with whatever the dish, because there are options if you know how to find them, right? You mentioned earlier a very famous word in wine uh, industry, restaurant industry, room temperature. That's a very, <laughs> that's a very, a very delicate, vague. it's a very delicate word. And it's a very vague one, I guess, as well. Uh, room temperature actually is coming from France, from Le Chambre. Le Chambre in France means uh, the room of a chateau, of a castle, you know what I mean? Which is so, probably like 15 or whatever <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Always uh, no, not less than 9, no more than 14, 15, you know what I mean? Always is staying there. Yeah. So when we say the room temperature... Definitely all, not this room temperature because it's quite warm. <laughs> all of us, all the hospitality people, uh, restaurant people, they need to understand that room temperature that we always mention is coming from the Chambre. Uh, French Chambre Award, that is a French word uh, regarding the translation of the room in France, room of a chateau, of a mm. castle, that is always not more than 15, not less than 9. It's a controlled temperature. 
yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's used very loosely, that, that term. And you're right with that. And that's even in cooking, it kind of happens when people are like, well, kind of like room temperature was like, yeah, but my room it's, is it's hotter August. than yours. It's August. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, you might not, we might not be in the same location. So, okay, so we know we, what we drink the coca van. Uh, is the garnish is the garnish going to influence the wine or not that much in this situation? Uh, to be to be honest with you, usually when you're, you're plating cote most of most of the head chefs uh, the, they love to do mashed potato yeah. pomme de terre. Mm. So uh, if it's a pomme de terre that is, is having, let's say, only uh, some butter there, salt and pepper, let's say we don't change the uh, the wine. However, if you have some uh, specialist or uh, very enthusiastic uh, head chef that they want to use some truffles or they want to use some saffron or other things that yeah, could yeah. change the wine, uh, sommelier needs to be advised yeah, about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Take me in consideration in case that, that I need to change the wine. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I think this is where the communication between the sommelier and the chef is really important because totally. you need to know in advance. If you don't want to have surprises like, well, this used to be served with mashed potatoes, but now, you know, it's with, with rice. I'm like, what's going on here? Or saffron rice. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I get the point, yeah, when, when you say that. Okay, moving on. We're going to a bit of a fish style situation here. Talking about bula bays. Bullet, I, I think I'm not saying Bouillabaisse. this right. Bouillabaisse. Bouillabaisse. yeah, that's the one. Yeah, you see, my <laughs> French is not there. Um, which is a Provencal, Provencal fish stew with saffron. Loosely speaking, because I'm sure there are tons of variations. Uh, this is a very interesting, uh, very interesting dish. Actually, when uh, when I studied back on uh, high school and uh, university, uh, hospitality university about food and wine pairing, all all the teachers and all the manuals, uh, all the books at that particular time, they mentioned that for soups in general, you don't need to recommend wine. Hmm. However. If you're talking about uh, soups that they're having as a main ingredient fish or crustacea family, then you need to start to introduce something. introduce some <laughs> wines. Back uh, to Bouillabaisse, it's one of the most famous uh, dishes uh, from France, Mediterranean, Marseille uh, city style. And most of the time is uh, made with the fresh fish that uh, the fisher are getting in the morning. Hmm. So most of the time, it's catch of the day. Basically. Catch of the day. Well, <laughs> uh, most of the time I'll be, I'll stay on that region and I'll go for uh, Rosé du Bandol. Yeah, uh, I will go for Rosé du Provence also. Mm. But on the same time, uh, for the people that would like to try a white wine, I will try to to go with a Sancerre from a uh, Loire Valley Sauvignon Blanc uh, vinification, of course. Okay, amazing. Well, moving on, we've got Quiche Lorraine, which we, we all know it, but anyway, um, savory tart with bacon, cheese, and custard. Again, there'll be variations. Don't take my word for it, but you know, we'll we'll talk about the base, the basic one. Uh, Laurent, a very historical dish, and on the same time, uh, we need to remember both of us that on uh, on the coronation, uh, Charles the uh, Third selected as a dish of coronation quiche for him for his oh, uh, wow. coronation I didn't know that uh, so on the same time uh, as a food and wine pairing I'll be quite honest with you uh, with quiche Laurent, I'll go straight forward for Alsacian Pinot, Pinot Gris I will try to offer uh, some Pesaclonia wines on the same time that they're most of them base of Sauvignon and touch of Semillon but I will take in consideration that for Quiche Laurent, you could go even for soft reds. And when I say soft reds, I could go straight forward. If it's in autumn period, and let's say it's November, I could go uh, on Beaujolais style, or I could go to Morgan, I could go for Fleury. Or in the same time, if you look forward to enjoy uh, that Quiche Laurent, that it is a French dish, but Wherever you go in holiday, you'll find the <laughs> quiche Laurent on the buffet. <laughs> so if you go holiday and uh, Italy, in ho if you go to Italy in holiday and you'll find the quiche Laurent, try to use a lovely uh, Trentino uh, 
a lovely Lagrin Rosato from Alto Adige, or that is a beautiful rosé wine. If you're looking forward to have uh, a red wine with your uh, Quiche Laurent and you're in Italy, why not? You could uh, try a Pinot Nero or a Barbera mm. with your Quiche Laurent. And on the same time, if you go to uh, Spain, you could try with a Garnacha, a rosé, or you could try with a Cava. By the way, champagne, sparkling, or cremants, this was even the Prosecco, <laughs> they match perfectly with Quiche Laurent. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Amazing. Yeah, well, it seems like with Quiche, we have quite a few a few options, which is which is great because it is a popular one. Um, going back to slightly heavier stuff, you know, beef bourguignon, which is beef stew in red wine with vegetables at, at the base of the recipe. Beef bourguignon. If you, you translate the beef bourguignon... Uh, in English, will be Burgundy. <laughs> so it's it's a lovely it's a lovely dish. It's quite creamy, it's quite heavy. But on the same time, I will try by the book to use the same region of wine that uh, you are using on the production uh, on the culinary. So if you are using, I'll give an example. I was gonna say. So is it the same? Like if let's say you make coco van and you use a wine to cook the uh, to cook the chicken in, should you use? the same wine to pair it. You is that to, a good? You need to take in consideration that region. Uh, however, if it's a good quality wine, of mm. course, I'm, I'm totally sure that in our days, most of the chefs are using culinary, very good wine. So mm. that's why you, you need to take in consideration as the main options, the same wine that has been used for a culinary process. Yeah, well, that's amazing because that makes it, well, if you know what wine is in it, then it makes it easier, I guess, for, but if, if let's say you make something at home, you choose a good quality one wine. You may, use it for cooking. I? Sure, okay. yeah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, um, you choose it for cooking. You do your cooking, and you get an extra bottle for later. Why not? So or... I think that's actually a good way of an easier way to pair it in a way, because then you don't even think, well, I use this for cooking. Uh, let's get something else for drinking later on. You just kind of match it, and it, it makes it's, easier. Yeah. Amazing. So we've got we've got beef bourguignon, which yeah, again, we're trying to stay in the region because I know you're a big fan of that to stay uh, very close to the region where you are, if possible, because not all the time I guess is possible. But then in France they have this everything is, you this want. This is the beautifulness of the wine industry. You go in uh, countries like France and you have Burgundy, you have Bordeaux, you have Rhone Valley, uh, you have Languedoc Grousson, you have. Uh, uh, Cahors and uh, Falsas, some Champagne area, Jura, uh, a lot, a lot of uh, a lot of wine region that will give you more and more options in order to pair that wine and Amazing. that food dish, that food. Now I'm I throw in a dessert in here as well, something kind of mm. basic, tartatan, caramelized apple tart. So how how do we do with this? I'll be uh, straightforward. It's an enjoyable dish, and I'll give you two options, and I'll remain in France. One of them will be uh, Sauterne, that is a sweet, very famous sweet wine from France, vinificated uh, most of the times from Semillon and Sauvignon Blanc with a Botiti style of vinification, no Barol. However, as a second option, I'll give uh, uh, Rhone Valley uh, sweet wine, uh, Muscat Bon du Venise that uh, we need to take also in consideration as a very good uh, pairing. And the third options will go back to bubbling and I will go straight forward for Taitinger Nocturne, vinificated in uh, demi-sec. Mm. So it's a new trend now to have a um, rosé champagne or a demi-sec champagne match it with your dessert plate. Amazing. You start with champagne, you end with champagne. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Great. Okay. So we never going we're going to be here till tomorrow or even next week, you know, if you were to cover all the dishes in France and pair them with each one with wines. So we're going to move on from France to a different country. Which where are we going from France? Um, I choose the main one because we had the champagne. I'll let you to choose the second one. Okay, perfect. So we're going to Italy, which is my favorite. Um, Buongiorno. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, <laughs> Buonasera. I, I love Italy, genuinely. I love the language. It sounds good. Italians, you know, are dressed well, not like me. Um, yeah, more like you. Um, grazie, yeah. grazie mille. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's a nice country. You know, it feels romantic. Mm. It's got that vibe. It's, it's beautiful. I would go to Italy all day long. Um, to visit it, to spend time there, to drink their wines, to 
eat their foods because the food is quite simple. It's based on it's quality simple. ingredients. I love it. So let's get straight into it. We're gonna go heavy. We're going. We're starting with lasagna, which is an interesting one. Which is, everybody knows lasagna, but let's give you a bit of a description. <laughs> Layers of pasta, meat sauce, and bechamel. Oof. Lasagna, probably one of the most famous dishes in uh, in Italy. Mm. Now, depending on the area. Yeah, because there is a ton, a, a ton of variations, right? So let's go by the um, by the book. Usually, lasagna with red sauce, with tomato sauce. Mm. Uh, as a main wine recommendation, I'll go for Sangiovese, Toscani Sangiovese, or Montepulciano d'Abruzzo, uh, or even yeah, I go to some Piemont uh, Nebbiolo. However. If you replace the tomato sauce with the bechamel sauce, mm -hmm. white sauce, uh, for sure I will change my uh, uh, my options and I will go for a white. Mm. And I will try to take in consideration some Alto Adige, Sauvignon Blanc, and why not Müller Turgau. I don't know if you tried this great variety before. No, no, no. That sounds very <laughs> unfamiliar, to be honest with you. <laughs> uh, however, on the same time, if you have the the white sauce, so why not? You could take a verdicchio in uh, calculation uh, as a food and wine pairing. And nevertheless, prosecco. You could have a cartizzo prosecco with a bechamel lasagna. Boom. Boom. Sorted. <laughs> Sorted. Yeah, well, this is it. Yeah, again, uh, yeah. It would and, be tons of variations of lasagna. And something so. that I'm uh, dealing in the last five years, a lot of people that ask for a vegetarian lasagna or lacto-vegetarian mm. lasagna. So in case that uh, you have a lacto-vegetarian uh, lasagna, of course, without, without meat, uh, you need to take in consideration that, of course, you could have sparkling wine, but on the same time, you could have some neutral uh, white grey variety or semi aromatic so again Alto Adige will be a suitable option as yeah. a, for the wine pairing Sauvignon Blanc from there it's a very uh, uh, suitable and why not it could be match it perfectly amazing I like when we get to, that we go to Italy because I can kind of recognize 80% of the wine you're talking about. I wouldn't say that I know exactly which ones are, um, but I'm like, oh, I heard about this before. I probably tried this before. When in France, you know, I'm like, I'm not entirely sure what's and, going on uh, here. Now I'll give you another one because if you go holiday, of course you go in the south part of Italy. Yeah. Why not to have some vegetarian lasagna with the Fiano d'Avellino? Okay, okay, that's the new one. I don't, I don't know that one, that's for sure. Um, and my favorite wine is from Sicily, so. Oh. Yeah, we can Fiano d'Avellino, Fiano d'Avellino, it's uh, is he actually almost in yeah. that, that region kind of thing. Yeah. Right? Okay, amazing. Um, moving on, we're getting to risotto alla milanese, creamy rice with saffron risotto rice. Uh, okay, creamy rice, you have some uh, chicken there, you have some... If we go there. basic, basic like, there are some, I think there are a few recipes. There are a few <laughs> recipes that are just basically almost like a parmesan sauce. It's just the parmesan itself and maybe a bit of rocket or something very basic like mm -hmm. a vegetarian mm -hmm. and then let's talk about one with chicken and one maybe with prawns i don't know or with seafood <laughs> see uh, what we get right so usually i will uh, as a main uh, option if it's during the summer very mm -hmm. important i'll go for a rosé wine and i'll go for a type of alpolicella rosé wines uh, and on the same time, if I go to the uh, autumn time, I'll go for uh, Piemont, uh, easy to go, Barbera and Dolcetto. That will match perfectly. Uh, however, you need to take into consideration if you have it some, if he's having some beef there, why not? You could take in consideration to have some candy mm. that will match perfectly. So you got several options on the main ingredients, uh, things that they, they use it. It's I very, am. very, very important. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's why, you know, I'm I'm trying to kind of like get outside of just the basic dish and give a few variations because I'm sure depending on the region where you're going, there'll be different things added to it and or maybe removed and then you end up with a yeah. different flavor. Another interesting thing, because you, you told me uh, about um, chicken Milanese risotto. Why not? It's a very new trend uh, on white wines from uh, from Italy now. Tima Rosso. Tima Rosso from Piemont. Interesting. I have a splendid uh, wine just added in my wine list from uh, Vigneti Massa, that is a Piemont producer, and it's quite aromatical, quite enjoyable, quite round. If you have it in the proper temperature, that will be 11, uh, 10, 11 Celsius degrees. This Tima Rosso will match perfectly with uh, risotto in general. Amazing. Well, <laughs> good to know. You like risotto. 
Okay, moving on. We've got also buko, braised veal shang with vegetables. So yeah, finally ended up getting some veal in the menu. That that is one of my favorite dishes without to know that is called also buko. <laughs> and I'll be very honest with you. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. My mom used to to cook that when I was younger. Uh, slow cook, mm -hmm. you know, slow cook beef because variations. this is yeah, because mm. slow cook beef. So we always uh, do that uh, during the weekend, Sundays, uh, every two weeks, so every three weeks we cook that. So also buco Italian style is very near with what happened in our uh, background family as a cooking uh, mm -hmm. during the weekends. Uh, I will be very honest with you. If I go straight to Osobuco by the book, a slow cook, uh, I will go straight forward to Nebbiolo as a great variety, even if it's a Barolo or a Barbaresco. I will take in consideration a lovely Brunello di Montalcino. And why not for the people that want to have very aromatic wine? Amarone della Valpolicella will be a great, great uh, companion. Amarone della Valpolicella, base of Corvina, Rondinella Molinara, Appassimento style. Boom. Boom. What about some champagne? <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> uh, <laughs> why not? Champagne could pair with everything. It's funny. However, I feel like I'm an expert now in one because I'm going to yeah. pair it with everything. <laughs> Even if the people say champagne match with everything, I'll be very honest with also buco. If it's yeah, a it's rosé, a champagne a could, could match during the summer. If it's not summer, yeah. mm, I doubt. I guess it's a situation where it doesn't really complement the food. It's almost like neutral. It doesn't bring anything to the Correct. table almost. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, something that everybody will know, spaghetti carbonara. I'm not even going to talk about the ingredients because again, there are a ton of variations and apparently nobody really knows how was the original recipe. But we all know vaguely what goes in everybody, it. Everybody, they have their own recipe of carbonara. Exactly, yeah. So yeah. <laughs> I guess we can all agree that it has eggs in a in a way or another. It's got cheese, whatever that might be, because it can be some to do with pecorino romano, some with mm. parmigiano reggiano. So we'll we'll skip that cheese. Uh, pancetta again is questionable. If some people say guanciale, a bit more fatty. Okay, we move on with that and black pepper. Let's talk about this. I will talk about carbonara from the sommelier point of view. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about carbonara. Where the sommelier are very focused. They are using egg. They don't use how much they use egg. Mm. Uh, What's the quantity of the egg? Uh, they use pancetta. Okay, it's a matrate pancetta. It's a normal pancetta. Mm. This is the sommelier yeah, point of view. Yeah, yeah. And third, very important, what type of cheese? It's a mild, it's a creamy, it's a hard cheese. Mm. By the book, supposed to be hard cheese. But mm. you, whenever, when you go to a place, you're not sure that you have a hard cheese on uh, your, pan, yeah. on your uh, carbonara. So... Base of hard cheese, pancetta, and regular portion of egg, I will recommend Francia Corta as a main food and wine pairing. Francia Corta, it's older than champagne. It's, it's, it's a sparkling wine uh, with a second fermentation allocated in the bottle, the same how they do in Champenoise method, traditional mm -hmm. method. It's older than champagne as a history. And why not? Antinori Francia Corta. Amazing. As a main uh, options. Second options, you could try to have a creamy, creamy white, and I'll go from uh, Bramito della Sala from Italy also. Uh, that is a lovely Chardonnay, quite round, quite intensely. And on the same time, if you're looking forward, some people look forward to have some easy to go red. Why not? You could try some uh, Barbera. Tiny bit chiller in a bucket or uh, Franz Hals from Alto Adige Pinot Noir with, uh, let's say, 14 Celsius degrees. Mm. Chiller than supposed to be. It's a trick. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is it. Yeah, you see, stuff that, like that, which the reason why I know, you know, I'm coming from, you know, I'm coming from Northern Romania. So we drink, you know, I mean, we drink, I, I say we drink, I, I don't really... Uh, but, you know, 60% alcohol, you know, made from plums, you know, all know it, palinka, tsuika, depending on how you, how, how, which part of Romania you are. Um, but what I've seen, I remember being in, in college and uh, one of my colleagues uh, was putting this into the fridge before drinking it. And I'm like... That's interesting. I never really seen this before because it was always kept. It was kept in the basement. It was kind of cold, but not at the level of like two degrees or whatever is in the fridge, three degrees. And then when drinking it, 
I'm like, this doesn't feel that strong. It's totally different. It's so, such a Temperature difference. changed the, yes. uh, the quality of the products and the characteristic of the product. Yeah, that was very interesting to me. Okay, so all done with, um, with Carbonara. As I said, we're not going to get into too many details because you know there are a ton, a ton of recipes. More details are coming, more options are, <laughs> <laughs> could be suitable. <laughs> exactly, yeah, whatever is extra, we're just going to pair it with champagne and sort it. That's it. Whatever you know, you feel like, well, I'm not entirely sure, just get it champagne, it'll be fine. Um, we couldn't do Italy without pizza and we're going to touch on margherita, which is tomato, mozzarella and basil. Um, from there on, I guess you can go a thousand ways adding all sorts on it, but let's go with the basic. Basic margarita, Sangiovese base, Montepulciano base, young wines, soft, not very oaked, will match perfectly. Chianti versus Montepulciano del Brut, so that is having less than 12 months, uh, around 12 months oak or less, uh, will match perfectly. However, you need to take in consideration that some people don't want to have red wine with their pizza mm. and you could need to take in consideration some rosé wines from, let's say, from Tuscany or you could take in consideration some uh, Valpolicera rosé. Easy oh. to go. And <laughs> I'll bring, brace for impact. I'll come with my suggestion, which is Bira Moretti. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers for that. Bira Moretti is a nice beer. <laughs> to be honest, I, I have more than uh, 12 years since I don't drink beer, but probably, oh, really? probably the style because I'm, however, I'm reading about all of them. Yeah, yeah, because yeah I need to be, stay up to date. Uh, I think Bira Moretti up to the characteristic could be also an option. <laughs> I do like, I know I'm probably not, it doesn't really, it does say a lot, I guess, about me that I prefer more a beer with, with a pizza than a wine, just because I feel like it feels better for me. And I'm like, you know what, if it feels better for me, I'm not going to look any further. But yeah, having options, it's, it's amazing. Okay, so we're going to move from Italy. We're going to go to Spain. We're not going to go too, too far, but, you know, kind of in the region. And let's talk about paella. That's a very interesting dish, paella. So you, depending if you are talking about uh, paella from Valencia, paella from wow, uh, yeah. Barcelona, is it with is it or with... <laughs> everything about the Cordoba, Madrid style yeah. paella. See, this is where we're getting into <laughs> issues because some people are like, well, we add chicken to our paella. We, others are like, we add rabbit. We only make it with rabbit. Others are like, what are you talking about? We only do seafood here. So let's talk about probably it. each one and see see what was best and when. The best paella that I had it in my life was in Ibiza. Oh, wow. A very good friend of mine, it's a restaurant manager there, and he invited me to his place, Haru Cafe in Ibiza. And I had the best paella in my life, seafood paella with shrimps, uh, with uh, squirrel, with uh, uh, catch of the day, nice mix, nice texture, tiny bit of saffron to give flavor. Was even carrots inside. Uh, mini, um, Interesting. Baby, baby carrots, carrots. Baby carrots. Oh, wow. And uh, a lot of five type of pepper. Interesting. And would it was end of July, I think 2021, when I was in Ibiza. And to be honest, uh, I really enjoy kava. With that type of, uh, yeah. uh, that type of. Uh, Do you think Kava gets a bad rap, bread, a bad? Um, Recognize in comparison. Yeah. Do you think it gets a bad, you know, advertisement of being like the the cheap, uh, or some people say almost like the cheap prosecco or the cheap champagne or a bad version of these two. Let's say like that. Kava, it's a tiny, tiny of sparkling wine that is vinificated most of the time following traditional method with a second fermentation in a bottle. You have uh, economical kavas. Let's say mm, like that. Don't say uh, well, cheap. Well, you see, that's why you know, because I guess it comes like with like with any other product. You know, you have good and bad depending on the price as well. And you have some vintages, very beautiful vintages. Uh, kava. I have a. Uh, when I had my uh, lovely paella, seafood paella, let's say like that mm. in Ibiza, we enjoyed it uh, with the Jumpo, that is a very famous uh, cava producer. Uh, and it was in 2015, it was so lovely. It was one uh, very creamy, very buttery, matching perfectly with the texture of the dish, lovely velvetiness mm. and uh, clarity, perfect uh, food and wine pairing. However, why not? You need to take in consideration that an Albarino from Rias Bajas could be a suitable option in case that is uh, paella is based of seafood, fish or chicken, or even Godello. 
God damn, I think know. I mentioned last time about you probably uh, did I think yeah it sounds uh, familiar I know that I tried it ever but Godello it's a very interesting grape variety Spanish grape variety at this particular time it's grown only on Spain mm. and I'm quite happy with the quality of Emilio Moro as a as a Godello I already have it in my wine selection I have a splendid wines that from my point of view could be suitable for a lot of fish selections mm. and uh, seafood crustacea family splendid wine never get wrong with food and wine pairing with seafood never go wrong <laughs> amazing so godello emilio moro splendid wine perfect okay so now a bit of a tricky one because gazpacho is probably not something that you think that well you know should we even think about wine but should we think about wine is a cold soup cold tomato base and vegetables sometimes mix even some people add bread to it you know in to give you a bit of a it's it's not it doesn't really have much going on there there's a very interesting uh questions and from my point of view that is a sensible question also depending of each and everybody taste palate it's a soup it's a new soup on uh, the soups family so you have uh this soups you have creams you have consomme uh and now you have the gazpacho from my point of view, depending which type of gazpacho it is, because most of the time, uh, some of the chefs, they're using beetroot, mm. they're using orange, they're using uh, carrots, just to give flavors, and could be paired with a sparkling wine. However, in case that you want to go forward for a wine, depending if it's beetroot you could go for a soft red or if it's other type of uh, vegetable you need to take in consideration which vegetable it is yeah. there and how strong i guess that is in the... but just for my palate i'm fan of gazpacho and gazpacho <laughs> i'm not fan of yeah. why because it's something new uh, even for my palate i had uh, my first gazpacho in 2010. Hmm. So you see, it's already 14 years. And even for myself, I found it quite new entry uh, mm. dishes. It's, so, not, it's not too, too popular, especially if you go outside. Well, I know probably in Spain, Spain itself. Yeah. But then if you go outside of Spain, it's not like you see, for example, pizza in menu, you see carbonara, you mm. see coco van, you see all these, no. almost all the ones we talked about. But gazpacho is not. It's gazpacho, not quite... you'll find it usually in uh, restaurants from Peninsula Iberica, you know, from Spain or Portugal. Mm. Or, or you could find it in South America. I'm quite privileged because I work two seasons in South America on the cruise lines. Mm. And I did find it on Buenos Aires, Gazpacho. I did find it on Montevideo or Asuncio, mm. Paraguay. And uh, you know, even in Peru, I found it. By, by the way, one of the best uh, Gazpacho that I had it was in Peru. Mm. I bet they put all sorts of things in it. <laughs> <laughs> Very tasty. I don't know what it was. Whatever it was, it worked, <laughs> right? Okay, moving on. Okay, gazpacho, I think is it's almost like a controversial one. You know, <laughs> if you see, they probably just maybe skip the wine entirely. Almost, it's... don't skip the wine. <laughs> Keep a glass of champagne on the side. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. So we're going. We're moving on to tortilla española, which is Spanish omelet with potatoes and onions. So what do we do with this? Because this seems like more like a I don't know. Maybe it's a lunch dish as well, but it's. Sounds more like a breakfast situation here. I'll be honest. Uh, if you go to to do your holiday in uh, in Spain, you'll find it as a late wake up breakfast. So let's say brunch in yes. our case. So a glass of cava. Boom. Yeah, Boom. keep it local. <laughs> keep it local. Think about you're in Ibiza or in Tenerife, your party overnight and you go next day on the buffet and you have a tortilla or a seafood. Are you looking forward to have, after you, are you looking forward to have a Aromatical white, a red wine, it's 11 o'clock, or a glass of sparkling. So Kava is the answer. <laughs> Great. Moving on. We've got, le you let me know if I say this right. Hamon Iberico, cured Iberi Iberian ham. Is it hamon or is it jambon or is it hamon? Hamon, hamon, hamon. hamon, right? Uh, That's what I thought. But anyway, yeah, I kind of question myself now. Hamon, it's a culture in Spain. It is a culture in Spain, hamon. Mm. It's a very uh, popular dish. Uh, I spent one of my holidays in Madrid and we had the privilege to go to hamon factory. 
that is like 100 meters square or 150 meters square place where you could have different type of hamon. Matching perfectly as a side dish with uh, melone. Mm. However, uh, cava could be a main options. Uh, garnacha could be a suitable options. But on the same time, hamon, if it's quite intensely and you're looking forward to have a red, why not try a young Giroja, a Crianza of Veronia? Boom, we got that covered. Amazing. Let's touch on the dessert, which is churros con chocolate. I don't think that's more of an Italian than Spanish, but anyway, the way I pronounced it. So fried dough with, uh, with thick hot chocolate. Yeah. A sweet wine for, uh, but on the same time, think about that this one that they're having a high sugar mm, because it's having it a high sweet. sugar. You sweet. could try with the sparkling, with uh, of course with the cava. Cover. But however, if you go to south of uh, south of Spain, you have some Perez de la Frontera sweet wine. You could try it even with a Pedro Jimenez sherry. Mm. Or why not? You could do be more in uh, uh, more engaged with the dishes, and you could make a topping of Pedro Jimenez sauce. Added on the top of the dun of the chili, how we call it? Churros. Churros, churros on the yeah. top of the churros. And you could have the same uh, Pedro Jimenez tiny bit chiller mm. as a pairing. Amazing. Yeah, churros is a bit of a tricky one because if you, I guess, I guess if you search for it, you know, people will say, well, this is from Mexico. This is, it's got, it's, it's a weird way of nobody really kind of knows exactly, exactly. And they're all kind of fighting for it. I put it under Spain, but... Anyway, Latino dessert. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, going to Greece. And then I, I genuinely love white wine for Greece. My favorite, <laughs> genuinely, very, very mineral wines, especially we talked last time from Santorini. I'm, I absolutely love it. Um, let's get into the Greece food. Again, we're not going to cover the whole thing because we need to stay here for weeks, but. Let's start with moussaka, which is a baked dish with eggplants, meat, and bechamel sauce. But again, this moussaka. is one... Now we, you, we do it in Romania, we do it totally you, you, different. You, you touch one of my favorite dishes. You know, <laughs> this is a grandmother dish. Uh, yeah, you see? Uh, but depending, because the originally of moussaka, and now I'm going back to my uh, studies of uh, hospitality management. If you go back to the dishes of moussaka, mm -hmm. eggplant, uh, lamb, uh, beef, meat, uh, bechamel sauce. On that type of dish, of course, and is divided by uh, a lot of Balkan countries request uh, this dish. So Turkish, they said that they're their own dish. Greek people, they mention that it's their dish. If you ask some Bulgarian or Romanian, they say that if they put potato potato <laughs> as a preparation, is their their own dish. Yeah, oh. or if they put pork as well. Isn't oh, it? <laughs> yeah, if they put pork for sure, it's their dish. <laughs> Uh, well, I'll be quite honest with you. Uh, I will go uh, straight forward uh, for full body, uh, full body uh, Greek red wines. However, I'm thinking about also in case that uh, people wants to try extra minerality wines, you can you need to take in consideration Assyrtiko also. Mm. It's matching most of the time for seafood family. However, Assyrtiko at the moment, and also Simarovro as a red grape variety, Simarovro, it's a beautiful red grape variety, could be suitable for uh, this type of dish. Amazing. Moving on. Souflaki, which is grilled meat skewers. Well, again, it's very vague because I don't know. Is souflaki, it's called specific. It can be beef souflaki, chicken, pork. I don't think it's a very specific in terms of, if you say souflaki, it should be pork. Or it should be chicken, it should be lamb. I think it's just the that is on the skewer and is a meat that is was grilled on the skewer more than anything else. So it's more of like a barbecue situation here. A barbecue situation. So I'll <laughs> keep it. Uh, I'll keep it on uh, Balkans. I'll give a Simarovo as a uh, if it's beef or lamb, a Simarovo as a great variety from uh, Greek. I'll give a Mavruk that is a Bulgarian red, uh, mm. red grey variety. Yeah, quite in the region, actually. And yeah. a Fetasca Negra, Black Maiden, if it's a type of Romanian uh, grey variety. So I'll keep it in Balkan, everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> and well, why nice. not? Uh, I'll touch also Serbian uh, Prokupat. Mm. And I already give for one Balkan dish for Balkan grey varieties. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving on, we've got Spanakopita, which is spinach, spinach and feta filo pie. 
Asirtiko. <laughs> no, nothing <laughs> else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Asirtiko. <laughs> By the way, it's a splendid grey variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Lovely minerality. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, genuinely. I can I can definitely confirm that it's absolutely amazing. Um moving on, we've got gyros, which is meat cooked on a vertical rotisserie served in pita. It doesn't need to be vertical. I seen it on the horizontal and it was equally tasty. <laughs> Here, I'll be very honest, uh, because in Greek, they do different uh, gyros, they do different uh, depending on the regions. Mm, yeah, I will true. do my best to match with the wine from that particular region where I am. So if I'm in Crete, I will uh, enjoy a wine from Crete. If I'm in Santorini, I will take a wine from Santorini. Mm. Local grape variety, I will try depending where I'm uh, placed in Greek. But would it be uh, more for white, more for rosé, more for red? Which one would be like, generally speaking? I'll be more for rosé during the summer being mm. hot. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. sometimes most of the people, they are taking a gyros after they go out from uh, the, the beach session. Okay, so now we're going to get into something that um, if you are Greek and Turkish, you might hate me. Um, well, more if you are Turkish, because I put this under Greece. Uh, baklava which is sweet pastry with layers of phyllo, nuts and honey, which you can find in both countries, slightly different maybe, but they all kind of fighting for it, which one was first. So uh, I will not involve on a <laughs> fight of who was the first, but I really enjoy baklava. However, it's a quite uh, heavy dish, mm. but suitable and a lovely dish. Uh, with baklava, I will be very honest with you. I'll prefer to have a sweet wine that is not too sweet mm. because you have a lot of sweetness from the dessert. I will try to give a Muscato di Asti from north of Italy, from Piemont. I will try to give a champagne vinificated in Demisec, even if it's uh, a Titanian Nocturne, even if it's a British sparkling. Okay, we got that covered. The That's it. British we sparkling, I think that the last brand of Demi Sec British Sparkling that was quite enjoyable and I tasted was 19 uh, uh, Sherry Demi Sec. Okay. Right. So, for okay, this was for people that go on holidays, you know, but some of us said to stay on the island or they can only, for different reasons, they can only get to the UK. Oh. Let's talk about the local stuff a bit. You know, if let's say I stay in Jersey and I'm going, let's say, to Atlantic for lunch. I don't know what was in the menu, let's say, this week or last week, if you have something in mind. But tell me what was popular, basically, and tell me how would you pair that? Or what would you pair it with in terms of wine? Um, you can give starter, dessert, main, up to you, really. I'll be uh, quite honest with you. The market uh, menu that uh, every day is changed. So in case that uh, we will go for uh, seafood salad, mm -hmm. I have a large selection that could be suitable. I always love to have three, five options in my mind. A Lugana, a lovely wine from a Giacomo Mont Resort that is a Turbiana grape variety, could be very suitable for this type of uh, seafood dish. Uh, on the same time, I do have a lovely Pesaglonia, Chateau, Chateau Christophe Angela, that could also be quite lovely, enjoyable. Always a Pazio Senora Salvarino, could be suitable from Rias Bajas. But on the same time, for the people that they want to try something new, uh, Catena Zapata Semillon 2020 from Adriana Zapata will be an amigo, a gran el amigo, could be very uh, enjoyable. Are these mainly white or white? White, 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 white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. all of them are white. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. for the people that want to love champagnes, always... But again, let's go. <laughs> Taitinger, Poroger or Boulanger are available. Boulanger are available. Yeah, and then if we go, let's say, to desserts, I don't know what would be now popular uh, during this time. Some beach, sort of like berry. the lace they do. Uh, so we could think about to have a Saturn to go back to Moscato di Asti mm. or why not uh, Muscabon de Venice. Yeah, it's going on the sweeter side, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah for or dessert. the people that want to try something historical, Tokai. Mm. Hungarian, yeah. Forming Hungarian five putonas. Okay, amazing. Lobsters? If let's say we come and get yeah. a real lobster, I don't know, because we want to touch on the stuff that's quite popular locally for tourists or ourselves being as tourists. You probably go for lobster, you go for scallops, you get 
the seafood vibe, you know. So what what would would that be, you know? There's a very good uh, there's a very good mention because we uh, added uh, some lobster since now two weeks ago, and every day we have uh, as a catch of the day lobster mm. uh, on different uh, gramage sides. Yeah, yeah. So I was very interested when uh, executive chef added in our menu about the lobster. I was very interesting about which sauce he's using mm. for lobster. So he's it can using, be a termidor. Uh, 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 it's more alioli because termidor it's a lovely sauce, but it's having also cognac is quite powerful, not mm. be enjoyable for a lot of guests. Uh, so if you do a butter sauce, aioli sauce, uh, and herbs, uh, most of the time you go for Chardonnay. Mm -hmm. So I do have splendid selection of Burgundy uh, Chardonnays, like Poulini Montranché, Sassage Montranché, uh, Grand Cru Chablis, Premier Cru Chablis, Domaine Moreau is the Grand Cru, Domaine, Vaco, uh, Domaine du Colombier Vacopin is the Premier Cru. But on the same time, I keep my wine list open for people that they want to try a Napa Valley Chardonnay mm -hmm. that is more uh, more creamier, more rounded, more buttery uh, because you have the butter so so uh, there could be the thing that you could change the wine and you could have a Chardonnay from New World and I do have all these available interesting uh, uh, Napa Valley Chardonnay like uh, Cape Bird, like Saffir Red Shoulder that is a splendid Chardonnay and Chateau Montanella that is the first wine that doing a blind test in uh, 1976, if I remember exactly, with the vintage of 1973, they've been better than French wine in a blind tasting challenge. Wow, impressive. Well, if we get, I, I forgot to ask last time, you know, when Will was here, mm -hmm. the executive chef from uh, Atlantic, for people that don't know, um, does he have a, like a signature dish? Does he have something that he's very, he brings it on again and again because it's something that he's he loves. You know, what would that work with? Is there something like that? We might not have it, but... He's, just having, a, he's having several uh, signature dish, but I, he's having a monkfish that I'm quite a big fan of, mm. uh, of the dish. I think you'll find it even on uh, YouTube if you mm -hmm. check monkfish uh, with Holland. And it's an sp outstanding, spectacular dish. So what would that work with? Would that work with everything we talk about till now? Uh, most of the time will work, yes, of course, with the white burgundies. However, uh, you could try even uh, because it's a uh, monk fish during the autumn season, you could try also a medium body red. But most of the time you could go for a Chardonnay, uh, Côte du Bon, Côte du Noir, and of course you could take a Napa Valley in consideration. Perfect, we got that covered. Okay, Jersey moving out of Jersey because now some people, you know, can make it to the UK. You know, no further than that, but at least they can make it to the UK. So we're going to talk about a few of the British, maybe in combination with other countries' dishes, because, you know, again, it will always be, well, with this, we kind of put these, you know, in the world and other people, no, we did it. But anyway, fish and chips. What about fish and chips? Because then, you know, it feels like it is the kind of thing that, Kind of works with beer and nothing else, but what? what so let's go for the traditional fish and chips based of cod fish. Okay, so that's again important. <laughs> important. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you and your. Oh, boss. yeah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> it's time for your. For top up. <laughs> tiny bit top up, yeah. Okay, so yeah, let's let's talk about the one with cod because obviously there are a few variations. Some people use haddock, some pollock, I think, and you know, some place, some third, but if they want to go a bit crazy. Okay. If you want to try something from Italy, Pinot Gris, Pinot Gris will be the most suitable. If you love to have something from France, the Sanse could be suitable. If you like to have something from New World, you could try to have a lovely New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc for the people that love aromatical grape variety. Mm. Or why not? You could try uh, Australian Chardonnay. Amazing. So we got that covered. You know, when I thought we can only do it with Perry with beer, you see. <laughs> Depending on taste. <laughs> well, exactly. It comes down to taste. Yeah. Uh, probably most of the British people, they'll be like, you know, I'll have it with beer. That's However, fine, you know, I will uh, keep uh, this one on this. Uh, I just want to add something else. I had uh, the fish and chips now two months ago, and I pair it with the lovely Grunel Veltiner from Austria, Trizental uh, region from Huber. Mm. So, fish and chips, base of cod with Grunel Veltiner from Austria. Uh, the region is called Trizental, the uh, producer is called Huber. Was, trust me, a lovely minerality that matched perfectly with the fish and chips. Boom, yeah, you got to cut a bit through that fat. 
<laughs> you know, coming straight from the air fry, from the fryer, you know, with, with quite a bit of oil, yeah, and plus sometimes, you know, oily chips or, yeah. Okay, moving on, we've got shepherd's pie. We're not gonna get into the explanations. We all kind of know what shepherd's pie is. What about this? You know, it's got, it's got meat pie with mashed potatoes and mashed potato crust. So yeah, a bit of on a heavier side. It's quite a, it's a quite heavier dish. Some people love to have white aromatical and I give I mean, it could be an option. Uh, however, you need something to cut from that fatness. So mm. Sauvignon Blanc could be suitable also. And I do have some people that love to have some red wine. So you could have a blend of base of Merlot, a hot Medoc or Cru Bourbon from France would be very suitable. Or you could try, uh, let's say like that, if you go to Spain as example, uh, Spanish wine, you could try a Rioja or uh, you could try even a Ribera del Duero. Boom, we got that covered. Beef Wellington, like the classic one, let's go for the Beef Wellington, you know, this, you get quite a bit in Jebsy, not all the places know how to make it right. <laughs> That's one but of my favorite dishes, so how do you know that? <laughs> yeah, it's amazing, yeah, it is amazing, yeah. So let's let's talk about Beef Wellington, and if, let's say, you go into a restaurant, what would you like to pair it with, without even, like, questioning it? What would be the first on the list. Up to my taste, always I would love to have a hermitage or cross hermitage with uh, my Wellington beef. So base of Syrah, I prefer because I found it quite- Where is this from? Is it like- uh, France, France. France, okay. Ron Valley, Ron oh, Valley. okay. However, on the same time, if you're looking for Italian wines, I will go always uh, for, a, I'll give you a, one of my latest wines that I had with uh, Wellington and was a Cont Ego. Okay. Conte Ego from Antinori, Guido Altasso, 2020, with uh, Beef Wellington matching perfectly. Cross Hermitage, Michel Chapotier, 2021, was matching very, very well. Mm -hmm. uh, however, if I'll go for Spanish options, I'm thinking about a Vigna Tondonia, and I tasted a Splendid 2010, not two weeks ago. So all those three will be in my mind. Okay, so we covered the beef Wellington, you know, something on the, a bit more on the posh side. Uh, and yeah, you know, you don't find it in at every pub around the island or even in the UK. But let's go to something that you'll find it pretty much anywhere, which is bangers and mash, sausage with mashed potatoes. <laughs> this yeah. is like a <laughs> real challenge now because... <laughs> uh, it's uh, usually pork. Yeah. Mm. Uh, depending, oh, let's say, let's go for a Merlot Pinot and uh, we will uh, <laughs> we'll we'll cover, this. but I'm sure that a lot of people will enjoy a cider or a beer with. <laughs> exactly, yeah, well, this is why, you know, this is where the battle between wine and beer, you know, starts. Uh, remaining on uh, our world because it's having a lot of uh, fatness and it's very rich, probably I need uh, a, a glass of Pinot or Merlot to, to enjoy and after that I need a glass of champagne to clean my mm. fatness, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably for sure will match yeah. also cider or, uh, or a beer with that. Yeah. Okay, and one dessert, we don't want to leave it out, which is very popular, sticky toffee pudding. Right, sticky toffee pudding, lovely. Let's go straight forward, uh, Sautern. Mm. Let's have in consideration Ricciotto della Valpolicella because he's having a lot of caramel also, uh, the sticky pudding. Uh, and on the same time, let's uh, think about uh, Jurasson wine or even a maori domain de maori is there a thing i'm talking now in general you know when you have desserts it seems like you pair them with sweeter wines is there a thing that you do completely the opposite to balance like something that's very sweet with something that's a bit more i don't know mineral or it has like a very uh i don't know what what would be the word i don't know like something something that's the opposite side opposite. of Okay, let me not give sour you, because you you don't really find sour. Let me give you an example: uh, chocolate. Hmm. Chocolate, from my palate, I don't know if I'm wrong or. Uh, but but, it's but not, I really it's not enjoy. Wrong if you like it. But I really enjoy chocolate with Shiraz, Shiraz, yeah. or Syrah, or Pinot Noir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So look, I prefer instead of a sweet wine with chocolate, I prefer a Pinot Noir or a Shiraz. But that's my palate. Yeah, exactly. I guess I always like that, you know, because. 
There is absolutely nothing wrong. If you like it, who am I to tell you otherwise? You know, because in the end, I guess it's the same. You know, you can recommend to people wines. You can be like, you can tell their stories. And if they want to pair, you know, whatever wine with something that in your mind, this is kind of wrong. You know, if they enjoy it, I guess in the end, it's about that experience. If they enjoy it, you know, leave them be. Certainly. However, we need to keep in consideration some very important rules of food and wine pairing. I guess, yeah. But in the end, you know, if they're happy with it, you know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I know, I know, I know it's a conflict inside you. You are like, my God, this is wrong. But at the same time, you know, I guess if they're happy with it, what can you do? If they're happy, they're happy. <laughs> that but you know that. that that doesn't change the fact that it's probably wrong. I get what you mean. Yeah, totally. Let's talk about this wine right here. What, what about this oh, one? I think we need to, to go stay forward also. It's a very uh, classical uh, Provence Rosé. Of course, based uh, of Grenache and Cinso and a tiny bit of Vermentino. It's a Whispering Angel that is a very interesting uh, label and very common. Well, usually during the summer, it's you could it's even, flying off the shelf. You could drink it without food. It's matching uh, perfectly with the, the hot weather. What about the temperature? Because now I think, pardon, I think people vaguely know that white wines and rosé wines, you know, they need to be cold. But again, what would be the right temperature for this roughly? Uh, for this type of this type of Provence Rosé, probably uh, around 10, 11 Celsius degrees will be uh, very suitable to be served. Oh, wow. I thought that chill. would be lower than that. Usually, no, no, no. I mean, not that I know. I'm just kind of. I just usually I guess. they most of the time they are keep it on the on the fridge, you know, as a white wine to be at seven, eight Celsius degrees. However, the frame temperature frame is supposed to be seven, eight to eleven maximum. Mm -hmm. That that's the frames of service for a rosé like that, Provence. Is there anything else that we need to cover? Like we went a bit around Europe, obviously. There are so many variations, you know, you can go in other places and try different things. We just kind of touch on places where people travel most from the UK or Jersey. I'm sure there are other places where like, why we didn't cover that? Why we didn't cover I that? Think, I think you've done your best. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we can't stay here but for three hours and talk about each one know. of the you place. Could, uh, you could ask your followers to write down. Yeah, if, if they you have, have more than 10 comments yes. for a particular region. Absolutely. We'll, we'll come back next time and talk about it. Yeah, Stop. absolutely. It was a pleasure. It was different. I like it. I think we need more to casual. It. it was more casual than yes. the previous time. <laughs> yeah. And it was also, you know, it was quite a lot of things. I would like to believe useful information if you're going away. I think that the porridge make the difference. Well, to be fair, that was actually very tasty. So yeah, that helped. Yeah. Probably next time when we do it, we need to have again the same setup where we have a bit of wine or a or champagne and you know continue talking and stop in between and so some, on. some kind of place well yeah <laughs> honestly yeah i'll take care of that next time so um but yeah it was a pleasure i really yeah. enjoyed this Definitely. it was a different a different breath and then since next time where who knows you where you might get you know around the world with uh, competitions and everything else and more wines added to the list because now you the target is 500 i guess by probably next time you even probably, probably cross that five, 500 mark. And uh, yeah, it was a pleasure. Absolutely pleasure. Cheers. Sante. Salud. Prost. And Norok. Norok. <laughs>